The state pays tribute to the seven school-going children killed in Kumba at an official funeral presided over by Prime Minister Joseph John Gute, who extends the condolences, compassion and assistance of the presidential couple. 38 years of the New Deal government, a breath away from the anniversary, the accomplishments and the structural projects in road infrastructure, energy and social sectors, plus political reforms are highlighted in this newscast. Vote tally continues in the United States of America with the current Electoral College votes giving Democratic candidate Joe Biden an urge over incumbent President Donald Trump. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Those were the headlines of the 730 News. Each of us must comply with the measures that have been taken. Cameroon has paid final tribute to the seven school children brutally murdered in Kumba last October 24. The official funeral ceremony organized in the chief town of Meme Division was presided over by Prime Minister Joseph John Gute, personal representative of the head of state Paul Bia. At this solemn and emotional event, the clergy joined administrative and local authorities to call for the end to violence. Christian Chairman on special assignment has the details. Day of sorrow but also somewhere a day of honor for the seven victims of the Kumba massacre. The entire nation once again mobilizes to honor them, this time through the official funeral. Prime Minister Joseph John Gute, personal representative of the head of state, leads the wreath sent by President Paul Bia and wife Chantal Bia. During the interfaith service, the clergy calls for the conversion of the wicked. They pray that God receives the souls of the innocent victims. Thelma, Victory, Jennifer, Princess, Cindy, Remy, and Rema. The Kumba City Mayor, Gregory Mewanu, says October 24 remains a black date in the history of the town. He calls on the population to be courageous and to send children to school. He says the time has come for Kumba to rise and shine again. Southwest Governor Bernard Okalia Bilai reads out the condolence message of the head of state. I learn with great sadness of the horrific murder of several students of the Moda Francisca International Bilingual Academy in the town of Kumba. I condemn in the strongest possible terms this barbaric and cowardly crime against innocent children. I've also instructed that appropriate measures be taken diligently to ensure that the perpetrators of those despicable acts are apprehended by our defense and security forces and brought to justice. Prime Minister Joseph Jungute personally conveys the condolences of the head of state to the bereaved families before the caskets are handed over to them. We sincerely thank God and the President of the Republic for standing behind at this point in time. These difficult moments we are going through, we thank the entire government of Cameroon. We continue to count on you as we face these big challenges in our lives. May the souls of the little angels in the bosom of our Lord. Amen. In the midst of all the sorrow, there was yet some hope. Prime Minister Joseph Jongute visited the victims of the October 24 attack still in hospital in Kumba and presented gifts offered to them by First Lady Chantal Bia. Thank Mama Chantal Bia for the, for the uh, gift that she has sent to us. We pray that may God continue for the blessing and may God give you long life. Joseph John Gute equally conveyed the instructions of the head of state to the hospital administration, calling on them to take special care of the victims. 
At the end of the official funeral ceremony in Kumba today, the head of state's condolence was once more extended to the bereaved families. Prime Minister Joseph John Gute underscored the commitment of the state to preempt such barbaric acts and highlighted the essence of the visit to the injured peoples who received Mrs. Chantal Bia's assistance. Here's an excerpt of the head of government selected by Christian Choyatam. The President of the Republic uh, asked me to come here with the Governor of the Southwest Region, along with many members of government, uh, to console with uh, the parents of the young persons who were killed, the young students who were killed, and also to visit those who were injured in hospital. Madame Chantal Bia, the, our First Lady, also sent gifts uh, and uh, assistance to those families. Uh, the President of the Republic, who is a father and a grandfather, uh, is extremely saddened by what happened here. And uh, we are all, as parents also, touched by it. And he's asked me to come and give his solidarity with the people of Kumba and with the people of the southwest and northwest regions who have been going through a lot of adversity uh, throughout this year. We are uh, hopeful that this will come to an end very soon and in any case the perpetrators of this odious act would be apprehended and brought before justice. The education community who turned out at the funeral of the slain pupils today have saluted the concern of government at this time of grief. As they came to bid forward to the departed, the teachers and students expressed the wish to have tightened security as they go about their lessons. Kanga Williams Wasaloku has their reactions in this report. These students turn out in their numbers to bid farewell to their peers, brutally murdered in cold blood. As they watch the head of state's personal representative, Prime Minister Chief Dr. Joseph Diongute bow in front of their departed peers, they are comforted by government's attention to the recent attacks on schools. We are tired of our colleagues in school being massacred like, like animals. It's really a sorrow in our heart. Praying that let God should stop that so that we may go to school. I'm thanking the, the President of the Republic for sending the Prime Ministers to compensate the family of the dead people. Please, those who are killing the children, I beg of you to stop. This incident should not discourage the teaching learning exercise which the regions have embraced this year. For the perpetrators, you can hide from mankind, but not from God. And still on the gruesome killing, the Secretary General of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, Stephen Twig, extends his sincere condolences to Cameroon for the attack on the school in Kumba that gradually resulted in the loss of lives of seven children and wounded several others. The condolence message was sent through the Speaker of the National Assembly of Cameroon, Honorable Kavaike Jibril, the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association strongly condemns such acts and stands in solidarity with Cameroon. And now on to one of our top stories. The New Deal government, under the leadership of the distinguished president Paul Beer, has recorded a number of achievements since 1982. 38 years on developmental projects in the social, educational and infrastructural sectors have changed the tides. In the Southwest region, a major reform is the institution of a spatial status which takes into consideration the linguistic and cultural specificities of the people. Olivia Mbwai Ambai reports. Some observers in the southwest region are unanimous that President Paul Bia, for 38 years at the helm of the state, has been consistent and coherent in his actions to promote peace, unity, and national integration. Amongst what Dr. Chivate Mibako describes as major milestones of the New Deal government in the southwest region is the special stages granted to the two English-speaking regions of the country. Special stages is a branch of that effort to get uh, the southwesterners 
really, really involved in the development at the local level. These and other actions, such as the recent creation of the National School of Local Administration with headquarters in Boya, will give the ongoing decentralization process a major boost. Supporters in the southwest region celebrate 38 years of President Bia's ascension to power with renewed optimism and hope for brighter days. In the Northwest region, with similar concerns as the Southwest, the special status stipulated in the law on regional and local authorities is also commended. Many inhabitants uphold this is a strong volition to let the people become fully involved in the development of their communities. Eric Langmia Wolf presents some of the aspirations in this report. They believe that with the special status for the northwest and southwest regions, there would be a certain degree of autonomy for the embattled regions. Locals, authority of the English-speaking region can take a decision on their own development, particularly with road infrastructure, education, even why not the judiciary system. Many are preoccupied with the present state of some infrastructure and expecting the special status to address the needs of development. It's a time for somebody who is leaving Bamenda to go to uh, West region where you uh, pass across Babaju, you feel like you are not in this country. So some of those things should really be taken into consideration. The creation of wealth and employment opportunities and effective implementation of government's decentralization efforts should also be part of the spatial status. 15% of the national budget will I mean, trickle down to council to the uh, regions, meaning that my region will have to enjoy a little more than 30 something billion. The people here are expecting those to be part of the spatial status to be men and women who are development oriented and who will work to put the people first. As Cameroonians and especially sympathizers of the Cameroon People's Democratic Movement brace up to commemorate the 38th anniversary of President Paul Bia's accession to power, the population of the far north region are reminiscent about the attention they have received. Apart from structural projects ongoing, the region keeps a record of 10 presidential visits since 1983. Ayok John Ashu has the details. A landmark of the New Deal regime in the Far North region is the creation of the then Far North province by President Paul Bia on the 22nd of August 1983, when he was just nine months in office. This day, all the people of Marwa were outside to expand our joy. The head of state has over the years accorded administrative, health, communication, roads and education infrastructure, including the University of Marwa and its higher institutions to the region. Since his accession to power, President Paul Bia has visited the Far North region for a record 10 times to demonstrate his personal attachment to his brainchild. At the top of the Boko Haram event, he called me and bring my stone to this constitution to help to, to fire against Boko Haram. Meanwhile, in the face of security challenges posed by the terrorist sect Boko Haram, the hero of the New Deal has responded with the creation of the fourth combined military region in the fourth Janamari region, whose deployment on the ground has surmounted the challenge and maintained the region in one fold with the rest of the country. The provision of multiple sports and related infrastructure of high standards in Garua constitutes some of the major accomplishments of the New Deal policy in the North region, with a plethora of educational institutions in both the elementary, secondary and higher levels. Efforts have been made to increase the literacy rates. Wilson Mengole reports on some of the sports structures that have changed the face of the region. The 20,000 capacity Hundi Adze Omi Sports Stadium and its annex architectural jewels respecting curve and fifa norms and standards are some of the masterpieces realized under the new deal government of president paul Bia. everybody's uh, happy to see all this uh, happening because garwa don't forget the third best town in cameroon and it has to keep that image up to the end the road network hotel benue and 70 rooms hotels with an Olympic swimming pool, are uh, other top-notch development realities. Before, if you want to invite one of your guests here in Garwa, you can shame because you haven't got a nice hotel. Now you have a lot of nice hotels. Roads, 
<laughs> we use roads every day, uh, even for sport, for driving, for going to work and so on. While appreciating these major sporting achievements, the people of the North region are nevertheless still asking for more. The construction of the Bini Awarag Hydroelectric Dam in Ganha subdivision in the Damawa region is an earnest engagement to check frequent power shortage in the area. The futuristic project upon completion will produce 75 kilowatts of electricity and will supplement the energy supplied by the Lagdo Hydroelectric Dam. Alice Waji Bangmia tells us more. Several households and business operators in Gaoundere say they are currently fed up with the persistent blackouts that greatly perturb their daily activities. In search of alternative means of energy supply, inhabitants of Ngaoundere have their eyes fixed on the Bini Hydroelectric Dam. The project is expected to have a reservoir with a surface area of 82 kilometers square to contain over 603 million cubic liters of water. A hydroelectric power plant with capacity of providing 75 megawatts of energy and a high voltage power transmission line that can curb energy supply deficit in the region. Imagine un seul instant qu'on coupe la lumière dans la ville de Gaoundéré, c'est toute l'activité socio-économique qui est bloquée. Alors, pour pallier dans cette difficulté, le chef d'État justement a programmé comme ailleurs la construction du barrage hydroélectrique de Bini à Warak. The dam over river Bini in Warak is a project to reinforce the northern energy interconnected grid and the 75 kilowatts of energy produced will boost the economy. Still in the energy sector, the Lompanga Dam stands out as one of the major accomplishments of the state in the last couple of decades. It is a translation of the zeal to transform human lives and to attain economic goals through the promotion of industrialized production with energy as an essential factor. Mokram Robert Atchew reports from the East. Among many major realizations of the head of state Paul Bia is the Lompanga Dam in the East region. By 2016, the construction work on the 6 billion cubic meter dam had reached the stage of its achieving one of its major objectives, which is that of retaining water to supply the Senegal. Construction work then started on the 30 megawatts power plant to enable the dam supply electric energy to some 150 towns and villages in the East region. Work is ongoing on the power plant just below the dam. At the same time, the track through which the electric energy will be transported through a 150 kilometer distance to a reception point in Betwa for further distribution has been traced and individuals whose plots and houses are affected have been compensated by the end of the construction of the power plant and transportation of electric energy to the 150 towns and villages concerned. Power cut in the East region will be a thing of the past. The improvements of road infrastructure throughout the national territory are also benchmarks of the no deal policy. In the centre region, the towering of the national road number 15 from Bachenga, Ntui, Yoko, Tibati to Ngaundere is acclaimed. The bridge over the river Sanaga at Nashtigal in Bam and Kim division is also counted as we hear this report by Ebude Ikane. The National Road Number 15 from Bachenga, passing through Ntui, Yoko, Tibati and Gaundere, links the southern and northern parts of the country. Several years back, it was a nightmare traveling through this stretch of road at all periods of the year. During the rainy season, some areas were practically cut off from the rest of the country. The tarring of these roads as well as the construction of the bridge on River Sanaga at Nashtiga in the Mbam and Kim Division is indeed a blessing to the population. The tedious journey by ferry now belongs to history, while the bridge now serves as a link between the center and Adamawa regions and also facilitates trade. Bamekim is a place. It's a good news for the population because already their crops and all one not uh, they have, they do circulate on the bridge without any problem. Due to its strategic position, this road is also a transit point to neighboring countries in the Semak sub region. The Krabi Deep Sea Port that went operational in 2018 remains one of the most glaring maritime projects in the country. The state-of-the-art infrastructure, which boosts the economy and generates thousands of jobs, is being praised in Cameroon and in the Central African sub-region. Cyril Noazake tells us more. 
One of the most important and even best infrastructure projects the South region can boast of these recent years is undoubtedly the Kribi Deep Sea Port. Operational since March 2018, the three phases earmarked has only the first at that function's full gear. The second and third phases are equally a promising future, with the second, the extension phase, sprouting in broad daylight, an operation valued at more than 456 billion francs. CFA. There has been a tremendous increase from 2018 till date. A quick check at figures show an overall traffic of 8 million tons for 2019 as against 7 million tons the previous year, an estimated increase of 17%. It is by the will of the head of state that the Kribi Deep Seaport opens Cameroon to foreign markets through the major shipping lines connecting the five continents. The South region might nonetheless have other infrastructure projects that create thousands of employment, but there is no doubt saying the Kribi Deep Sea port remains the best gift. The West region on its part has experienced a tremendous upgrade of its porting facilities at its wool host, a pool of the 2022 African Cup of Nations. The region now prides itself with six stadia that meet international standards, as well as several kilometers of road tar to ease access to these structures. Shanslin Nanze has the details. The West has moved from having no modern stadium before 2016 to possessing six stadia of international standards in 2020, dotted in four divisions, the Bafusa Municipal Stadium and its annex, and the Bamenzi Municipal Stadium in the Mifi, the Mbuda Municipal Stadium in the Bambutos, the Focho Victor Stadium in the Kunki, and the Bafang Municipal Stadium in the Opankam. Hosting a pool of the 2022 AFCON also entails fluid traffic circulation, and this is being taken care of. A bypass road has been constructed from the Bamugum roundabout to the airport and to the TPO roundabout in Bafusam. Another from Tobo in Banjun to Kwekong, and the town of Bafusam is being given a complete facelift with the rehabilitation of roads. Still linked to the 2022 AFCON is the Bafusam Ultra Modern Referral Hospital that stands not far from the 20,000 seat Omnisport Stadium in Kwekong. The wearing of face masks in public places will be mandatory until further notice. Professionals in Cameroon continue to warn that the country is not free from a new wave of coronavirus infections. There are indications of new COVID-19 strains in the society and as such, the strict respect for barrier measures must be observed. Baldwin Sama and his guest, Dr. Eric Tandy, at the Public Health Emergency Operations Center, say how vital this is. Hi, Baldwin. You, Esther Kima, with over 500 active cases of the coronavirus still existing in uh, the different regions of uh, Cameroon. The question is whether or not we have some new COVID-19 strains in our society that are quite virulent. We discuss that tonight with uh, Dr. Eric Danzi. He is a public health expert. Good evening to you, doctor. Yeah, good evening, buddy. Tell us, do we have some new COVID-19 strains in our society? Yeah, Baldwin is too early to conclude if they are new strain or not, but we've seen if we are having a new wave that is coming up, it means that there is a pos possibility of propagation of new strain, and we must be very careful as far as this is concerned. We've seen a wave that is coming up in Europe, and remember, before we recorded our first two cases of COVID-19 in our territory, Europe has been experiencing this before and again we must be very careful because we've seen that being propagated in Europe why not take precautions as far as our own community is concerned. Thank you so much Dr. Eric Tanzi for being a guest this evening. We simply just have to continue respecting our, all the outline barrier measures to avoid any possibility of a second wave of the coronavirus in Cameroon. Back to you Esther Kima. Thanks Baldwin Summer.
Continuous sensitization is essential. In other news, members of the Executive Bureau of the Board of the African Regional Center for Labor Administration, CREDAD, have deliberated on the management of the institution. In a video conference presided over by the board chair, the Minister of Labor and Social Security, Gregoire Owner, the mandate of the outgoing director was discussed. A firm commitment to ensure the respect of the rules and regulations of the institution as well as improvements of training to meet the challenges of the labor markets also came under review. On to one of our top stories, two days after the holding of the U.S. presidential election, Americans are yet to know their new president. Vote tally is underway in five key states, including Pennsylvania. The current Electoral College votes gave Joe Biden an urge over incumbent president Donald Trump. Charles Ebonet reports. The Federal Bureau of Investigation's headquarters in Washington today, two days after United States elections, D.C., the president-elect for the next four years is yet to be known. Across American cities, protests on the heels of the incumbent electoral fraud claims. The projections put the Democratic flag bearer, Joe Biden, at 264 of the 200 and 70 electoral college votes needed to become president of the United States. At this moment, the tally for President Donald Trump is 214 electoral college votes. The complete map will be determined in the hours ahead when five states, including Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, must have counted their ballots. The waiting is yet to be over in a country with seven time zones, one of the realities of American political exceptionalism. Drama. On this sad note, senior journalist Mireille Lambeau has been paid professional tributes at the CRTV National Station. In an emotional ceremony today, which was preceded by the coffining of the talented and devoted worker at the mortuary of the Jongolu Hospital, CRTV's Director General Sean Dongu recalled the immense loss of a committed professional, her humility and assiduities missed by her colleagues and her family. Baldwin Sama reports. Her final journey to the world beyond, her last stop at the CRTV National Station where for several years she worked as a news presenter. Colleagues and friends emotionally touched, especially welcomed the mortal remains of Mireille Lambeau. During a brief ceremony to pay tribute at the National Station, attended by many CRTV workers, friends of the deceased and family members, the different eulogies described the one fondly called Mimi as humble, assiduous and talented throughout her career. CRTV's Director General Charles Ndongo described Mirel Lambo as a true professional throughout her stay with CRTV. I still remember the self voice on radio. I still remember the beautiful face on the 7.30 TV newscast with a comportment and a deployment that attracted millions of viewers and listeners. Her last newscast presented on radio was aired alongside a TV documentary on her works at CRTV. The impressive turnout both at the National Station and the mortuary of the Jongolo Hospital this Thursday simply confirmed the love CRTV and her friends have for this ever smiling lady whose mortal remains left the CRTV's National Station for the last time, leaving many colleagues in tears and pain as Mireille Lambo dies at 48 and will be laid to rest this Saturday in Bacham in the west region of Cameroon. And a special program on Mireille Lambeau will be broadcast immediately after this newscast. Under this advertorial, computers, printed machines and scholarships have been awarded to students with outstanding results at the government bilingual high school, Mutengene. The donation which promotes academic excellence is from the Société Anonyme des Brasseries du Cameroon, SRBC. Details with Tanjong Levis Agbo. One of their objectives for several years now is to promote education and excellence. La Société Anonyme de Brasserie du Cameroon offered computers, printing machines, textbooks, school bags and other didactic materials to government bilingual high school Mutengene, appreciating the institution for their resilience in times of difficulties. According to both the administrative staff and students of the institution, the computers will help facilitate the teaching and learning process. In Mutengede, we have been like orphans since 2017. 
but they have brought a smile to us and so we are very very grateful we appreciate this gesture so much the ICT uh, gadgets are going to help us especially with the present uh, dispensation of e-learning we thank the ABC for our bags, readers and books. They are going to help us a lot in our education. While we echo in the need for all to be educated, the communication director of the SABC group said the donation will no doubt boost ongoing efforts put in place by the government in ensuring quality education for all Cameroonians. We are here today because SABC group promotes excellence at school since 1948. Since we are the first enterprise in this domain, the message of SABC group is only to tell them that you cannot succeed without work. Hard work brings you to success. The SRBC group have equally donated 45,000 school materials and COVID-19 kits to different academic institutions in the southwest region. It is hoped that these will improve the output of the school. The state has paid tribute to the seven school-going children killed in Kumba at an official funeral presided over today by Prime Minister Joseph John Gute, who extended the condolences, compassion and assistance of the presidential couple. That does it for this edition of the 7.30 p.m. newscast. Immediately after this newscast will be CRTV's special tribute to Mireille Lambo, who has begun her journey to eternity. Join Adel Bala at 8.30 p.m. for the news in the French language. Tomorrow, Ben and Bumagana will be your host. Thanks for watching tonight and have a blissful weekend. If you don't In this connection, we should avoid stigmatizing. Born on October 12, 1972, in Kongsamba, in the littoral region of Cameroon, Mireille Lambo, fondly called Mimi.